I asked 20 doctors from YouTube to give me one fun fact about the part of the body in which they are a specialist. I'll go first. My name is Dr. Mike. I'm a family medicine doctor, which means I am one of the only specialists qualified to treat most ailments and provide comprehensive health care for people of all ages. One fun fact is in 1953, general practitioners were estimated to be making between 20 and 30 home visits each day and seeing between 15 and 50 patients in their surgeries. We actually still oftentimes do home visits for patients who are bed bound or are otherwise unable to leave their homes. I'm Dr. Danielle Jones, known online as Mom and Dr. Jones, and I am an OBGYN physician. That means I specialize in pregnancy and gynecologic problems. So starting in the 1930s and continuing until the modern way we test for pregnancy was discovered well into the 1960s, testing for pregnancy included injecting human urine into a frog. If the frog laid eggs, you were pregnant. If it didn't, you weren't. Hi, my name is Dr. Brian Suter, and I'm a non-surgical sports medicine doctor who focuses on treating orthopedic and musculoskeletal injuries in athletes. Many of us have variations in our anatomy, where one person might have a muscle or a tendon that somebody else doesn't. A common example is the palmaris longus. It's a muscle and tendon in your forearm that some people just don't have. You can check for yourself by bringing your thumb and your pinky together and flexing your wrist and looking for a tendon sticking out below the skin. My name is Dr. John Patton, Doc JP3, and I'm a board certified anesthesiologist and a regional anesthesia and acute pain medicine specialist. So fun fact, if you smoke marijuana or you drink alcohol, you may need more anesthesia to go to sleep, more anesthesia to stay asleep, and you also may need more pain medicines afterwards to have good pain control. So look, anesthesiologists, we're your friends. <laughs> we're on your side, we're on your, you're on your team here. So just tell us the truth and let us know if you smoke marijuana, if you drink alcohol or you're taking edibles or whatever it may be, anything that you could be doing, if we ask you questions, just tell us the truth, let us know. We're gonna find out one way or another. My name is Dr. Anthony Yoon and I'm a board certified plastic surgeon. What part of your body is most sensitive to touch? Do you think it's your fingertips? Well, that's actually not true. The most sensitive part of your body to touch are your lips. Your lips are 100 times more sensitive than your fingertips. My name is Dr. Michael Cellini and I'm a dual board certified diagnostic and interventional radiologist. One fun fact about my specialty is that I can actually use your own blood vessels as a highway to navigate wires and catheters to any organ in the body. I can pretty much get a needle or catheter anywhere in the body using ultrasound, x-ray, CT, and even MRI guidance. I'm Dr. Curran and I'm a general surgeon in the NHS. The male colon is about eight to 10 centimeters shorter than the female colon, which means that the feces empties faster, which means on average, men tend to get less constipated than women. I have to go to the bathroom. Now here's where it gets even worse. You throw in some hormone fluctuations during periods and you have period poops, not fun. Hey there, my name is Dr. Sanjay Janeja. I am a hemonc specialist, which specializes in blood disorders and cancer. One of the craziest things that we don't appreciate, a bunch of ingrates, all of us, is that we are constantly beating and avoiding cancer. We have like 10,000 mutations a day as we age, and our immune system does a really good and underappreciated job of beating out those sketchy cells that could have otherwise become cancer. Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Winters, also known as the dentist on social media, and I am actually a dentist who specializes further to become an orthodontist. And we deal with moving teeth with braces and aligners. Fun fact, your teeth are actually the hardest part of your body, okay? They're harder than any bone or anything else in your body, but they're also the only part of your body that cannot repair itself, meaning that if you hurt them, they're, they're hurt for life. So make sure to take care of those teeth. Hi. My name is Dr. Glockenflecken. I'm an ophthalmologist. It is possible to sneeze with your eyes open. It would take a lot of effort to do it because you have to overcome your own body's natural reflex to close your eyes. But it can be done. And no, your eyes will not pop out of your head. Hello, my name is Dr. Austin Chang and I'm a gastroenterologist, otherwise known as a GI specialist. One fun fact about the gut is that growling sound that your stomach makes when food, fluids, and gas pass through there's a name for it. It's called borborygmy. And it's just kind of fun to say, borborygmy. My name is Dr. Dana Brems and I'm a podiatrist, which is a foot and ankle surgeon. One fun health fact about our feet is that they contain a fourth of the bones in the body. There's 26 bones per foot. Hello, my name is Rohan. I'm a consultant interventional cardiologist from the UK. The whole body, of course, depends on the heart for its blood supply, but the heart itself is the most oxygen hungry tissue in the body. The heart squeezes and pumps blood to all the other organs, but it's actually when the heart relaxes that it receives its 
own blood supply, so it's the only organ to fill in what's called diastole when it's relaxed, another reason that the heart is so unique. Hi, I'm Rena Malik, a urologist and pelvic surgeon. I bet you didn't know that only 14% of women orgasm through penetrative sex alone. Most need some form of clitoral stimulation to achieve climax. Hi everybody, this is Dr. Jesse Gold. I'm a psychiatrist, which means I look at the brain-body connection, or really, I'm a feeling specialist. Anxiety disorders are the most common disorders we see in psychiatry. I really like to explain it from an evolutionary perspective, meaning anxiety has a purpose for us and always did. It helped us predict threat, and run from a threat. The problem in anxiety disorders is we always see threats or always think they're coming. And so we never get out of fight or flight mode. And that's when it becomes a disorder because it's interfering with your day-to-day -day life and you're scared or predicting threats everywhere. Hello, my name's Ed Hope. I'm an NHS doctor working over in the UK in the emergency department, or as you may know it as the emergency room. Something that you may not know about emergency medicine is the term shock is not just the reaction to finding out your dad is on OnlyFans. In medicine, it means a life-threatening collapse of your circulatory system. So for that reason, it's sure to get emergency doctor's pulses racing, and it will get your pulse racing too because that's the way your body compensates for a low blood pressure. Hey, hey, my name is Dr. Alok Patel. I'm a pediatrician, specifically a pediatric hospitalist. So I take care of babies, kids, and teens who have been hospitalized for a variety of different reasons. In the first few years of life, over a million new neural connections are made every second. That is wild. And exactly why sight, touch, sound, real world experiences are so important for young babies. Hey guys, I am Dr. Shireen Idris, a board certified dermatologist. One fun fact about cosmetic dermatology is that it is literally the marriage of art and science and not to be underestimated because over time, if it's taken too far, it can really have psychological impacts on somebody. So you want to make sure that you're taking care of the person's mental well-being, their aesthetic well-being, and the artistic outcome is perfection. Hi, my name is Dr. Antonio Webb. I'm a board certified orthopedic spine surgeon here in San Antonio, Texas. One interesting fact about spine surgery or, or about the spine and also the brain is that they are billions of neurons which are connections between certain parts of your body and these connections are signals that are from your brain to your spinal cord and to your muscles that allow you to move, walk around, part of your digestive system. What's going on everybody? My name is Dr. Cedric James Franklin Rutland and I'm a pulmonary critical care specialist which means I focus on diseases of the lung and I take care of individuals who are admitted to the intensive care unit. So your lungs are directly related to what you breathe in. So if you live near a freeway or if you live in an area that's heavily polluted, your lungs are probably chronically inflamed. If you smoke, if you vape, if you smoke marijuana, your lungs are likely chronically inflamed. Click here to learn how I gained 10 million subscribers and maybe pick up some YouTube tips for yourself. Huge thank you to all the doctors who helped me make this video. All their channels are linked down below. As always, stay happy and healthy.